Due to the reality that software applications can be offered all over the globe, a question arises as to the best way to test these products prior to launch. Should the trials be more confined, leaning on technology and a small number of specialists, or should they be more inclusive of a broader human experience? A lot of folks are still testing software as if it was the Y2K. You put it into a lab, you have a lot of people pounded on the screen, but it's really not testing how users live, work, and play. It's not testing the concept of the digital experience. We're testing applications with a million and a half people on how your clients are going to use that application. That's Chris Malone, the CEO of Applause, a company who has developed a platform that harnesses the power of expert human analysis. Their technology activates an international community of professionals to gather very comprehensive feedback on newly developed apps so their customers can launch with confidence. On this episode of Business X Factors, find out how applause succeeds by winning big and losing small while doing the thing that they believe is right. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, head of strategy at mission.org. Welcome to Business X Factors. Each week, we'll take a look at the secret sauce that takes companies to the highest levels of success and then unpack how they got there. We'll explore how these organizations are even run and then what's so special about the people, the culture, and the processes that make it all happen. What is technology for? Our friends at Highland believe technology is for transforming the way you work, for delivering complete information when and where you need it so you can be more agile, more empowered, more connected through each interaction and in every relationship. Highland believes in technology thoughtfully designed to create better customer experiences. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. Chris has never really been alone. And this unique experience of always being connected to another person has impacted his worldview throughout his life. I've been on a team since day one. I have a twin brother. <laughs> so <laughs> I've actually never had to tackle problems alone in my life. And I'm very fortunate to say that where it's the way I approach new ideas. It's the way uh, I approach problems. My twin brother is one of my best friends. It's just one of those things where you get more done working together. It's collaborative. It's fun. Right away, growing up, Chris learned there are times of agreement and disagreement wins and losses. But the key concept is keeping the family in a solid position. Early on, I think what was great, especially as a twin, is, look, you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. How do you keep the family strong? Being a twin was an advantage for Chris that offered him a unique perspective. The reality of life is not everyone is born from an equal position. Chris is upfront that his parents were able to give him a head start when it came to business success. Both my parents have been tremendously successful. and. My father growing up has always been a chief financial officer, as long as I can remember. So Sunday afternoons or Thanksgiving, we didn't get around the dinner table and talk football. We talked reverse mergers and what's going on out in the world at current events. And I'm very privileged in the fact that I feel like I got a head start in life. Some people suggest that winning at all costs is how the game of life must be played. Chris's parents taught him a different view about winning that he still believes holds true today. You got to be proud when you go home at the end of the day, whether you're telling your spouse, your kids, your mom, your dad, this is what I did today. I assume it's going to show up in the Wall Street Journal. Both my parents did an incredible job saying, it's not just about winning, it's how you win. Chris has taken the lessons he's learned from his parents and applied them to his own life. These foundational pillars, as he calls them, redefine the meaning of success for Chris. For him, winning includes serving a greater community and leaving behind a proud legacy on its behalf. These principles also seem to align with the work and culture of applause. It's not just about the core four, the core six, the immediate family. It's how do you give back? 
how do you leave this place better than what you found it? Not just generationally, but for the community that you operate in. Those pillars, I almost call them pillars of success, and there's a whole bunch more, have been invaluable to me. They have shaped the way I lead my company. They shape the way I raise my own kids, and they shape the people I want in my life. I want to be with like-minded people from a value and morality system that share that purpose. We'll get more into Applause's community-driven mentality here in a bit. Right now, let's learn a little more about what led Chris to Applause, which was a smaller company when he first joined. Chris's alma mater, Babson College, really helped set him on this path. What they promote is an entrepreneurial spirit in all things that you do. And there's a tagline, and I won't sound like a commercial here, but it gets you thinking globally, and it, it allows you to solution problems that otherwise, I think, wouldn't normally come about. And meaning, yes, you work in a team, but it's how do I make things better? How do I leave a positive impact on everything that I do? Initially, Chris worked as an auditor in public accounting and then moved on to other large companies where he learned additional helpful skills, including how to manage people, sell products, and make commercially minded decisions. Eventually, Chris had the itch to join a startup. So he accepted the position of CFO at Applause. I met Duran Ravini, our CEO at the time, our current executive chairman. And at the time, that company, which was named UTES, we rebranded to Applause for a variety of reasons. But the notion came up that, hey, look, you know, how do you solve the world's problems with software at scale? And I wanted to go to a startup, and I did. I think we were about 15 million at the time. We're obviously much bigger now. But that's why I jumped. And Applause has been a tremendous success over the past 10 years. I always joke around with applause where if you look down at your phone and you swipe two, three times, there's a chance we test 75% of the applications that run your life. We're working with brands today that reach billions of users and they rely on us for that digital experience. It's always interesting to learn how an executive rises in the ranks to eventually become CEO. I always took an interest in how do we make it a better place? How do we grow? It's not just about the numbers. And I was fortunate enough to work with some great investors and then probably a year, year and a half ago, Duran was grooming me. And he said along the way, hey, Chris, I think it's time to take the reins. This brings us to our pivotal question. At its essence, what is so unique about applause that has led to so much success? Find out after the break. If you run a business, you have information. Loads and loads of information across different channels, systems, and silos. How can you connect the dots to make sure the right information gets to the right people who need it? Highland helps more than half of the Fortune 100 companies do just that by providing them with the tools they need to digitally transform and create more meaningful connections with the people they serve. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. Before the break, Chris Malone was describing how he became the CEO of Applause after serving as CFO. Now that we're back, let's uncover what makes Applause so special. Software, when you put it into the hands of users, you get some pretty interesting use cases. The differentiation, why people come to Applause, is that we bring the power of a software platform, but also with a community that's a million and a half strong. It's very unique. It's very disruptive. I mean, most folks out there, and I'll say it pleasantly, a lot of folks are still testing software as if it was the Y2K. You put it into a lab, you have a lot of people pounded on the screen, but it's really not testing how users live, work, and play. It's not testing the concept of the digital experience. We're testing applications with a million and a half people on how your clients are going to use that application. Chris describes how Applause uses both the power of its platform and their extensive community to test how software applications are really working. He even mentions the concept of game theory as part of the solution. In their article, Game Theory, Professors Avinash Dixit and Barry Nailbuff explain the concept. Quote, game theory is the science of strategy. It attempts to determine mathematically and logically the actions that the player should take 
to secure the best outcomes for themselves in a wide array of games. The games it studies range from chess to child rearing and from tennis to takeovers. But the games all share the common feature of interdependence. That is, the outcome for each participant depends upon the choices, strategies of all. End quote. Chris's mention of game theory makes sense when reflecting on this aspect of interdependence among people in a community. But in more simple terms, Chris brings Applause's success back to the idea of teammates, employees, and expert testers working together as one community. We're not hitting the code level. We're hitting the usability of it, the functionality of it. We're working with those brands that are trying to drive billion-dollar revenues through those mobile applications, web applications, payments, omni-channel, or they're trying to drive consumer engagement. At this point, applications are the front door to your brand. So unless you get that experience right, you have a problem. This whole notion of the crowd and the question around what is the power of the crowd, it's a little bit of game theory. How do you bring together a network effect of individuals working together in order to solve a problem? And for me, I've always been on a team, whether it's sports, whether it's work, whether it's family life. That's what we do here at Applause, both from an employee base, as well as our community of a million plus professional testers. I mean, we're in 200 countries and territories. I think we have over 6 million connected devices within the community, apps and cars, any type of uh, digital application factor. And that network effect, it just can't be matched. According to Chris, a very complex world requires a broad community to make sure software applications work across so many different products and variables. You think about the reach. If you're going to watch a movie on one of the various streaming platforms, how do you go from your mobile device to go to your console, other OTT devices, which uh, gaming consoles? How do you pick it up at a friend's house? How do you then go back later on? All that catch and release, it's very complicated. And the only way to do that is to test it the way your users ultimately will use it. That crowd effect, it just can't be replicated. To further clarify the usefulness of Applause's platform and community of expert testers, let's consider a couple of use cases, shall we? For instance, Applause has provided testing for Uber's app across different devices in many areas of the world. Additionally, take a look at Applause's work with Western Union. As the world has become increasingly digital, Western Union requires testing of various transfer processes all over the world and across different payment providers and devices. For Western Union, Applause was able to deliver testing in 82 countries for over 2,500 transactions. Applause's broad reach puts it in a compelling position to help companies launch winning apps. Their widespread influence also enables Applause to make a positive difference in the lives of their own teammates and gain interesting insights concerning innovations. First, let's learn more about how Applause takes care of their people. I never had to worry about paying the rent or where the next meal was coming from. And that's why I say I got a head start in doing it. And I think it does become more difficult for people when they're worried about keeping the heating bill on and honestly, where the next meal is going to come from. So that's why part of what we do here is we compensate people well, we treat people well, because yeah, look, we're trying to promote equality, but some people just got a head start. Rising tides, right? How do you bring people along? Having international testers gives Applause the opportunity to make a significant constructive impact in the lives of their worldwide workers. We're able to provide opportunity for folks around the world, women specifically, who otherwise wouldn't have access to this type of work. And we work in regions, all US allowed, but we work in regions of the world where, in some cases, it's very difficult for women to have access to this type of technology, these applications, and in some cases, it's still frowned upon. And so there's a lot of social good that we're able to do. Over half of our community is actually made up of women. The notion of gig-based work can activate a polarizing response. Some argue that it provides people the flexibility they really desire, while others suggest the gig economy is not sustainable. Chris believes gig work at Applause can help talented people remain connected to the tech workforce. For example, it can provide an alternative option for workers with young children. And there's a lot to be said about women who take a step out from maternity. We also provide opportunities because of the gig-based nature of our community where they can continue to enhance their skill sets, not completely come out. Even if they choose to take two, three, four years off 
from the workforce, we're able to provide opportunities for them in small bites. And so they can keep uh, those talents and technical skills on point. I sleep very well at night because of that. And it's always great when I'm telling my kids, this is what dad's company does. It's one of those things we do it because it's the right thing to do. Chris points to the co-founders of the company, Roy Solomon and Duran Ravini, for creating a diverse and accessible environment. Our company, Applause, and I say it with pride, was founded by immigrants. And the nature of diversity and a welcoming atmosphere has always been core to what we have. So we have programs here where, actually, we put our money where our mouth is. We work with certain organizations to provide opportunities for underrepresented minorities and actually have a, a work program in place in order to allow that to happen. It's not just throwing something up on a website because it's good for a brand. It's quietly doing it the right thing. And then you can take credit for things later on. It's character, right? It's how you operate when no one's looking. And that's a big part of the culture here at Applause. Applause's position in the market also gives it an incredible perspective on where technological innovation is heading and even where some companies are having difficulties. One of the benefits of Applause is we deal with pre-production applications and, and hardware. So we know where a lot of it is heading. I think thematically, look, it is a dispersed world where users obviously want instant access to all forms. And so you have blockchain, you have web 3.0, you have the metaverse. I think what we're seeing with our clients is the ability to onboard into new emerging technologies needs to almost be instantaneous. So when you think about it, when you have these development organizations within enterprises, yes, they're set up in agile, but even then, they're dedicated to a product roadmap that is, yes, innovative, but it is still hard to pivot. And so what a lot of companies we see are struggling on how to be not just reactive, but to set up cultures that they could be accepting of new technology. So what does that mean? It means when large software companies come out and say, all right, well, this is a new digital payments platform. This is where we're headed for AR and VR. Companies need to be thinking about how to ingest that into their existing footprint without turning their existing development organizations upside down or turning their existing GTM organizations upside down. It is so fast paced right now. And so literally every day, every day, Applause is testing a new emerging application or device. You know, there are some interesting developments happening when a CEO like Chris that deals regularly in these territories is shocked by not only the pace of innovation, but the innovations themselves. At this point in time, people are trying and in many cases failing because it's ideation within an SDLC that all of these products obviously don't hit production, don't hit the market, but it is so far ranging, even I get surprised and we see a lot of it. It's just, wait, they're going to do what? I think there's a number of initiatives in the works right now, which are going to change the way that consumers pay for end goods. The whole concept of fiat money, like it's not going away, but applications such that you can use it where an end user only needs to carry their phone for life. Everything they have is on their phone. And in some cases, they don't even need a phone. It's digital imprints. How do you go with uh, taking a concept of an RFID chip and using it elsewhere? The form factors are also getting multi-tenant, multi-modal. So what you see out there is I don't want one product that just does one thing because a user wants to do many things with the product. And obviously, with our phones, that caused us to want it that way. And you see that trend being applicable to a variety of IoT devices now as well. These innovative ideas are certainly exciting, but even more compelling is Chris's take on teamwork, the idea of shared success and struggles, and how this can apply at applause. You win together and you lose together. And then you learn from losing. And look, you got to win big and lose small. Constant success is impossible. Even the most successful companies lose from time to time and then make adjustments. Perhaps Chris is suggesting that losing small is really about learning quickly and making changes and doing all of this as a team. Though wins and losses and change are inevitable within any successful organization, it's also very intriguing that according to Chris, Applause's mission and culture have remained largely the same since the very beginning. The vision of the company was when you put software in the hands of humans, the use cases become very diverse. And so the vision all along was there is a better way to test technology in the wild. How do you test in the wild? That has been our core from day one. 
marketing messaging may get tweaked along the way. But at our core today is when you release product, if you're the CTO, the CPO, the CMO, the CDO, who's ever responsible for those consumer-facing applications, when you hit the button, is it going to work? In 2013, we had a great tagline. We help companies launch apps that win. That still holds true today. Winning new digital users, winning brand loyalty, winning in the market. And today we have a winning culture because of it. They call our culture here a winner circle. Those foundational principles, unchanged from where they are today. Our core values as a company, unchanged. We will do cultural refreshes. We will make sure that as times change, we're also a learning organization. We're taking on new concepts, but foundationally, we're the same. For applause, helping companies launch winning apps into the market is all about testing them in the real world. By combining a sophisticated platform with an international community of experts, applause customers can be confident in their products. For Chris, he's never really been alone. He's always seen himself as connected to others, and this traces all the way back in his story to being a twin. Applause has a similar perspective. They see people all over the world as valuable members of their community. Chris and Applause care a lot about doing what's right. Chris learned early in his life that it was very important to win the right way. What is the right way? Caring about everyone as part of the team. I don't know about you, but when I have a decision to make, I look for information. I may look through emails, documents, photos, and files in multiple places. And if I'm lucky, I find what I'm looking for. So it's amazing to me that while I have trouble finding a single file, some organizations' success hinges on making sure that the right people can get all the right information they need when and where they need it. Like hospitals, insurers, banks, and all sorts of businesses. I don't know how they do it, but our friends at Highland do. Highland empowers more than half of 2020 Fortune 100 companies with tools that help make sure the right information gets to the right folks easily and automatically and makes business processes smarter and more efficient. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. You've been listening to Business X Factors created and produced by our team here at mission.org and brought to you by our friends at highland.com. Are you enjoying this show? If you are, I know I would be so grateful if you took two seconds to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, as this helps ensure that more listeners like you find the show, and it also lets me know how I'm doing. If you enjoyed this specific episode and you want to dive deeper into the topics discussed, be sure to check out the resources section of our show notes, where we've included helpful links, articles, and books including any stat or story referenced in this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, and I'll catch you next time on Business X Factors.